Okay, I'd like to start the KGRI, KO University Global Research Institute and Lecture Series. Uh, my name is Masato Yasui, I'm our uh, director of the KGRI and uh, professor of Hong Kong at the School of Medicine. Uh, it's my great, great, great honor to introduce Professor uh, Mikoshiba. Uh, I think everybody knows him very well. Uh, but uh, I'd like to briefly introduce uh, him. Uh, Professor Mikoshiba uh, graduated uh, from here in the medical school at Keio in 1969 and uh, got a PhD uh, here in uh, 1973. And uh, <coughs> after a few years of assistant professor here at the Department of Physiology, uh, he went to the Paris Pasteur Institute uh, under the guidance of uh, Jean-Pierre Chanjou. Uh, uh, he uh, has already published the first paper on the cerebellar P400 protein uh, missing in the mutant mice, uh, which later he discovered it as an IP3 receptor. Uh, today, uh, I think he's going to talk about the history of this discovery. <coughs> then uh, he uh, came back to uh, Japan, the Keio, and uh, after several years, he moved to the Osaka University as a professor. Actually, when I was a medical school student, uh, uh, Professor Yamagishi and I, uh, we are the last two uh, <coughs> students, uh, fortunately, uh, could listen to uh, Professor Mikoshiba's uh, uh, lecture as a physiology. <coughs> And uh, then uh, he uh, also became a chief scientist at the Riken and professor at the Institute of the Medical Science at the University of Tokyo from uh, 2003 to 2015. And from this April, uh, he is now a professor of the Shanghai Tech University, uh, especially appointed uh, professor of uh, Toho University, Faculty of Science, and visiting professor Keio. Uh, he is now the distinct uh, uh, guest professor at Keio Global Research Institute. Uh, today, the uh, title of his talk is the IP3 receptor calcium channel from its discovery to a new paradigm in health and diseases. So, Professor Mikosiba, please start your presentation. So, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yasui, for a very kind introduction. I'm Katsuhiko Mikoshiba, a professor of uh, Shanghai Tech University and also Toho University. I'm really honored to be a guest professor of Keio University here. And uh, it's a great honor to give a lecture here uh, as a, a KGRI lecture series and, and on the title of IP3 receptor calcium channel from its discovery to a new paradigm in health and disease. So uh, my main uh, subject today is calcium, which is essential for our life. So I, I will briefly introduce what is calcium. Calcium is a metal, and atomic number is 20. And uh, the word of calcium comes from calcics, originated from Latin word calx. And uh, there are two forms of calcium in our body. Actually, we have enormous amount of calcium in our body mainly as a bone and teeth. More than 99% uh, precipitated form of calcium exists as a skeleton. And slight amount of calcium exists as an ionic form localized in the cytoplasm and blood. And since the calcium is very toxic because it's an uh, iron, uh, metal ion, it's, it is usually toxic so that the uh, concentration difference between outside and inside is very enormous, 10,000 times difference, and keeping the uh, concentration very low inside the cell. And uh, in, in this case, precipitated form is not toxic, mainly uh, calcium phosphates also. So it is really interesting why we use calcium as a boon not barium or other ions, ma not magnesium. We have to study why 
what is the mechanism why we used calcium? We, we still, I have to still study about that. Then I just would like to introduce briefly, all of you know that it is important, but I, as a textbook uh, uh, items, I just would like to uh, describe the uh, calcium modulated functions in mammalian cells. This is a cell, and what calcium does. First, calcium de dependent transporters are activated using ATP energy. Then, fertilization and cell division, calcium is very important. And also, muscle contraction, striated muscle and smooth muscle, both requires calcium for the contraction. And also, exocrine secretion, calcium is really required. And activation of kinases and phosphatases, calcium really is essential. And gene expression, it is already known that the calcium is really essential for the activation of the various kinds of enzymes, uh, gene expression. Then recently, apoptosis, a positive uh, way of cell death. Apoptosis requires also calcium. And uh, these are the items uh, described in the textbook, but fortunately, these are science, molecular cells, science, science, nature, e-life. These are fortunately from my lab. So I could contribute to the description of these uh, textbook items, fortunately, based on the activity of uh, young researchers and students. Now, by the development of uh, various kinds of very nice indicator for the uh, calcium ions, we can visualize the movement of the calcium. This is called oscillation, calcium oscillation. Now, this is one cell. This is the egg act after activation by sperm. Then you can see high frequency or low frequency. And cells can understand the oscillation message. If it is slow, it gives one message. And if it goes fast, it gives another message. That means when we manipulate the amplitude or frequency of the cell, inside the cell, we can manipulate the function of the cell. So this is very important. So we, when we just manipulate cell uh, amplitude or frequency, we can manipulate the function of the cell. Then calcium is a versatile signal regulating many aspects of cell activity. However, calcium must be kept under strict control at a very low level inside the cell. If this control failed, calcium becomes a negative messenger. But zero calcium is also toxic to the cell. So certain amount of calcium really required for the survival and normal function of the cell. And massive global calcium increases in the side cell are incompatible with cell survival and inevitably induce toxic cell death due to the deleterious process activating phospholipases or nucleases or proteinases. So calcium has by uh, both function life and death. However, calcium signaling may be disturbed in subtler, uh, more specific ways due to alterations of individual components, mainly of uh, proteins of the calcium decoding and or calcium controlling systems. These alterations These alterations do not immediately terminate cell life. They permit it to go on, albeit with various degrees of discomfort. This mice feels really uncomfortable. And uh, this is actually the disease of ataxia. And this is actually the knockout mouse which we made of, by, uh, from the IP3 receptor. Then, 
we, we have been analyzing various kinds of molecules, which is important for the regulation of calcium. We discovered a key molecule, IP3 receptor, which is the endoplasmic reticulum channel that converts GPCR, G protein coupled receptor IP3 signals to calcium signal at the endoplasmic reticulum to produce a calcium oscillation. So IP3 receptor is a key molecule for cell function. Then, what is the function of the IP3 receptor? First, fertilization. This is the egg-sperm interaction that starts from, that is essential for, for our life here. And those of ventral axis formation, those means a, a back, a, a, it means spinal cord. And ventral is a, a abdomen. Those of ventral axis formation requires, we finally found that IP3 receptor is really essential. These are the papers we uh, cont contributed. And new right extension, IP, we found that IP3 receptor is really essential. And exocrine secretion, at the time, nobody believed that calcium is re IP3 receptor is required for exocrine secretion. Because when we started, already the paper by uh, Jim Rothman and others reported that snare hypothesis everything to explain exocytosis. So nobody believed that the IP3 receptor is important for exocytosis. But finally, we discovered that IP3 receptor is really essential for exocrine secretion, in addition to the snare hypothesis. And learning and memory, we found that uh, it is important, IP3 receptor is highly involved to it. And behavior, as I mentioned in the previous slides, that uh, when we made a knockout, it shows abnormal behavior and positive cell death, apoptosis. I will just show you later that IP3 receptor was finally involved in apoptosis. Then, how did I found this molecule? I was working on the uh, ataxic mutant mouse, which shows really abnormal behavior. And I was really interested to know what is happening inside the brain then we, this is actually the section which I uh, fixed and cut at the Keio University School of, uh, University School of Medicine uh, in the Department of Physiology. I did myself. Uh, still, it is, I, I would like to use it. Here, this is a Purkinje cell. Purkinje cell morphology is very beautiful. Here, this is the Purkinje cell deficient mutant. No Purkinje cell. And there's another mutant with the Purkinje cell exists, but the dendritic carburization is so poor and spines are completely absent, that results in the absence of a synaptic contact. So in this mutant, for example, here, this protein was, uh, uh, this uh, cell is missing, then we found that this band is missing. This is the gel which I did myself. Then I was wondering what is the function of this molecule. But uh, we, we are just imagining that uh, this protein may be so important for the existence of the cell or for the synaptogenesis. And I was working in the laboratory of Jean Pierre Changeu uh, in, starting in 1976. And then when I come back to Keio University, uh, Jean Pierre just encouraged me to continue the work. Then here, in Keio and Osaka, we discovered IP3 receptor. P400 protein is the IP3 receptor. And we spent a long time, two years and a half, to obtain specific monoclonal antibodies to stain Purkinje cell. It is really beautifully stained. And using the uh, specific monoclonal antibodies, we screened the uh, CDNA library and by expression vector system, and finally got the whole sequence. Then we found that IP3 receptor is actually P400 protein. This band is actually the IP3 receptor. Nobody believed, because uh, many people at that time just cut the band and injected the rabbit to get the screening, uh, did the screening. But we just obtained uh, 
specific monoclonal antibodies, and we selected by Western blotting, spending uh, two years and a half. That was the success of the uh, further uh, work. And we actually got the three independent, very nice antibodies, and one of them just blocked the function of the IP3 receptor. Then, how did I correlate P400 protein the, with the IP3 receptor? I started my work in Jiangbei Shangju and uh, almost purified when I just uh, left. We published in 1779. Uh, then, it is very interesting. This mutant, French group, just reported the calcium spike is absent. So we have to be always careful for the information published by the other people. And here, calcium spike is absent in the spine, absent mutant. So now we just had an imagination that P400 protein may be related to the calcium. However, we did not, we could not correlate with IP3 receptor. But the paper came out from Berridge's group that calcium, IP3 releases calcium from non-mitochondrial store. This is the Nature paper. This is the title. And uh, uh, Snyder's group just uh, uh, did, uh, he's a pharmacologist, he did the uh, IP3 binding site. And it is highly expressed in cerebellum, especially Purkinje cell. Then we could correlate P400 protein, IP3 binding protein, and calcium just together. So this logic just uh, encouraged me and hurried me up to work on it. Then. We screen the CDN library and obtain the whole sequence. Then finally, we, we could publish that uh, IP3 receptor is a calcium channel and it, it has an IP3 binding activity and it is located at endoplasmic reticulum. And this is the uh, cartoon to show the uh, signal transduction of uh, IP3. Uh, and uh, IP3 receptor and calcium. Stimuli is uh, recognized by the receptors and G protein coupled uh, uh, receptor activates PLC to produce IP3. Then IP3 recognizes uh, 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 IP3, then calcium is released. Then we could contribute to, to each steps. First, how is it a channel or not? We incorporate, we purified in a native form and incorporated it into lipid by layer. And we found that it is a cation channel. We could not say it is a calcium channel because uh, even potassium ion can be passed, barium. So why it is a calcium channel? It is calcium channel in vivo because there is a calcium pump to pump in calcium from outside, uh, inside, uh, inside the ER from the cytoplasm. That's why in vivo, it becomes calcium channel. But in vitro, it is a cation channel. And then we uh, also confirmed by liposome system that it is a, a cation channel. Then to understand the uh, channel mechanism, it is important well, how it is uh, uh, localized and uh, how is the situation? We found that by tetramer formation, by cross linking experiment, it forms tetramer. And later we uh, cloned that uh, we found that uh, uh, three ice forms exist, and these ice forms make a hetero tetramer. We publish in JB. All most of them are published in JBC, and then. Determination of the transmembrane portion is very important to understand the mechanism how IP3 is uh, opened, uh, IP3 receptor is opened by the IP3 ligand, then release the calcium. The transmembrane topology is very important, but uh, other groups, are, except our, our group, claimed a transmembrane portion, and they attacked us. Mikoshiba's group uh, the proposal is wrong, but finally we confirmed that six trans transmembrane topology is correct. And the IP3, we, uh, I will show you later about the IP3 binding core and other part. 
Now, coming back to the uh, original uh, textbook uh, uh, scheme, extracellular signals are recognized by the receptors and G-protein coupled receptors activate PLC and then cleaves PIP2 to produce diacylglycerol and IP3. As all of you know, that the protein kinase C was discovered by Professor Nishizuka, which is a remarkable uh, achievement. And uh, fortunately, uh, IP3 receptor is just the uh, corresponding uh, molecule, and we found that it is the channel. And it releases calcium. But we, later, I will tell you that the this uh, textbook is wrong. I will tell you additional uh, finding we observed. And uh, we are now having a very many uh, evidences that IP receptor and protein kinase C is really working together. I will show you some of the data. Here, this is uh, the, uh, there is a metabolic pathway involved like this. And these inositol uh, uh, phosphates are so important. They are, uh, some of them are also considered to be the second messenger. But uh, among these molecules, IP3, 1,4,5-trisphosphate, is the sole molecule that has a target as a channel. So among these uh, various kinds of uh, presumably a second messengers, IP3 only binds the channel. It is very unique. And uh, I'm, I'm really pleased to just uh, attack the IP3 receptor itself. Unfortunately, we cloned the whole sequence. At that time, it was about 10 kilobase. And at that time, it was the longest sequence ever reported. The longest one was a Professor Numa's, Shosaku Numa's uh, cloning, cl cloned sequence that was ryanodine receptor. That was the first. And ours was the second. Then, this is the uh, cross linking experiment showing monomer, dimer, trimer, tetramer. And uh, uh, we just analyzed where is the IP3 binding site. It is localized at the endoterminal region. We named IP3 binding core and suppressor region because this binding affinity is very high here. And very interestingly, there are three ice forms. But three ice forms of binding affinity is almost the same here. This is different. So association with each ice form of type 1, 2, 3, affinity is just suppressed indicating the uh, very unique IP3 binding affinity of each ice form. And uh, fortunately, we just uh, 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 crystallized the IP3 binding core uh, published in Nature and the molecular cell. These are uh, just uh, composed of uh, alpha helix and beta sheet. Uh, here, this is the IP3. Then alpha combined uh, IP3 and uh, 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 alpha helix and beta sheet they, they just uh, associate uh, to uh, express a very unique IP3 binding affinity as a whole. Then this is the localization of uh, ER. You can see the immunogold method here. And uh, this is the first demonstration that IP3 receptor is really localized on the endoplasmic reticulum. These fuzzy structures are IP3 receptor. And we just cloned in my lab that the mouse IP3 receptor 1, 2, 3, and human 1, 2, 3, Xenopus levis. Xenopus is a, uh, has a tetraploid, so it's not necessary to clone everything. One cloning was enough. And uh, invertebrate is a single gene. We cloned C. elegans, Drosophila, starfish. And we recently cloned Trypanosoma cruzi. It's, again, it's a, a single gene. Then, what's the difference between each ice forms? At the beginning, because the general structure, IP3, one, two, three, are very similar. So when I was asked, they, they, they may be very similar. But it was so different. Actually, the, uh, as far as the sequence is concer uh, concerned, conserved site is so small. And also, 
maybe you know that the five promoter region is very important for the expression for each ice form. Five promoter sequence we cloned sequence. It was so different. That means the expression pattern is so different from cell to cell and even uh, subcellular organelle. And phosphorylation sites are so different. And glycosidation sites are also different. And splicing sites are different too. As I mentioned that IP3 binding affinity is different because IP3 binding core, highest binding site is almost the same affinity, very high. But suppressing activity was different. That's why IP3 binding affinity became different among three ice forms due to the presence of suppressor domain. These names are uh, made in my lab, but uh, all the people in, in the uh, world is just uh, using our named word. I'm really pleased. So the conclusion of our paper is that uh, to change the ter uh, concept, traditional uh, model is that IP3 bind to the IP3 binding protein, and then information is transmitted to the channel nearby. This was the classical model before our paper. But uh, just uh, we published that IP3 receptor is a calcium channel, then immediately all the textbook uh, scheme is switched to this. But we really wanted to further analyze what is the structure, because it is the endoplasmic reticulum channel, different from the channel on the plasma membrane. So we really wanted to know the property of IP3 receptor. Then we spent more than 15 years to crystallize the IP3 receptor. Most of the crystallization was done by 600 amino acids in the channel. We crystallized 2,217 amino acids. We spent 15 years. But finally, we did it. This is the crystal. And uh, uh, just uh, we, we analyzed the crystal at the spring eight, cyclotron at Harima. And uh, the, uh, maybe you, you all know that uh, this is one car, so it's a huge uh, cyclotron. And uh, many people in the world are just coming here to analyze the data. These are the uh, uh, details, but uh, we did some various kinds of mutations and also analyze and we try to, uh, we uh, obtained uh, more than 1,000 crystals uh, to analyze and, uh, and then finally uh, we get the uh, 70 data set and then finally got the data. Here, this is the data. Here, this is the structure of IP3. It is composed of alpha helix and beta sheet. You can see the magenta color. This, finally, we found this is the really critical uh, part for the channel gating. Then we crystallized in the presence of IP3 and also absence of IP3, and we found that structure is slightly changed. Here you can see the change. So there is the allostric structure change. This uh, structural change is small, but it is really significant. And you can see that the leaflet uh, as a magenta color, this is the uh, site that uh, contact with the channel domain. And finally, we found that this is a very important part. And we narrow down two or three amino acids that when we mutate, every channel gating is just blocked. And there was a, a hypothetical model how IP3 binding is transmitted to open the channel. One uh, proposal was that the C terminal and N terminal just uh, bind together to open the channel, published in uh, Sherry Shiva's group. And the other group is that uh, this is uh, another group is that the global structural change is important to open the channel. And actually, they, these are our data that uh, 
they made a paper like this, but uh, when we eliminate this part, nothing happens. It is intact. And elimination of the N terminal region, the function, IP3 receptor function, was normal. And finally, we published in uh, uh, Golden Conference, and all this model was accepted. And finally, this is the real data that any deletion of this part doesn't have any suppression of the activity. And also, uh, HD3 domain just next to the uh, leaflet region just blocks the channel activity. Finally, this is our hypothetical model that IP3 binding causes a local confidential change and that results in a global structure change that opens the leaflet region to move out. Then calcium channel is open, then calcium is released. Then, well, we are really wondering what is the role of IP3 receptor? It's a channel, but why it is localized on the endoplasmic reticulum? It is the endoplasmic reticulum is the place for protein synthesis. So protein synthesis machinery is just coupled to the calcium releasing activity. So IP3 receptor may be invo also involved in protein synthesis and also calcium storage. Then we just further analyzed how IP3 receptor is working in a cell signaling. And these, most of the uh, uh, orange color is discovered in my laboratory that uh, many of the disease-related uh, uh, molecules are involved in just associating with the IP3 receptor. And also, it is a chaperone. It's just associating. And some of the cytoskeleton molecule and even calcium calmodin associates and apoptosis-related molecules, which I will tell you that it is associating. And uh, please remember that sodium potassium ATPase is a, it's a pump, sodium potassium pump, that is essential for the keeping the concentration of sodium potassium across the plasma membrane. But we found that sodium potassium ATPase associate, directly associated with the IP3 receptor. So the traditional concept can be completely different, will be changed. This is the collaboration work with Anita Peria in Pas uh, uh, Karolinska Institute. And we found that even the trip channel, it associates. Then, we just, uh, this is a uh, guanine. This is the IP3 receptor. These may be the IP uh, molecules, so these, uh, IP receptor associates with many of the molecules, and the IP receptor uh, offers a platform to, for these molecules to inter interact with each other. And then, as I mentioned, that uh, uh, this magenta color part is uh, really uh, highly conserved, even trypanosoma cruzi, even though the IP3 binding core uh, sequence homology is very low. Then, this is uh, impressed in annual review of physiology that here, the leaflet region, which we cons consider that it is important. And uh, these are the molecules which I presented that it is associating with IP3. It is just surrounding the leaflet region. And so, we are now Calpane, caspase, uh, uh, cell death factors are just surrounding nearby. So uh, just uh, when we observed that the uh, single cell uh, uh, cDNA level, it was so difficult to j understand the mechanism, but now when we analyze through dimensional crystallographic analysis, now we understand at the near atomic uh, resolution level how the disease-related molecules may be associating with the IP3 receptor. Now, I just would like to introduce some of the functions of the uh, IP3 receptor in fertilization, development, and differentiation of the IP3, uh, uh, and IP3 receptor. Here, 
this is a collaboration with Dr. Miyazaki, and uh, we found that when we introduce the function blocking antibody into the egg, even though the sperm is here, nothing happens. Without antibody, it shows a very nice calcium oscillation. And this is the first demonstration that uh, fertilization requires IP3 receptor. And we can say the same thing in sperm uh, oscillation. So when we eliminate the calcium waves, I, I mentioned that the calcium wave and oscillation is important for cell function. In this case, calcium oscillation is just blocked. We just blocked by another way. I just mentioned that the IP3 binding affinity is very high at the IP3 binding core. We just mutated the binding core. Then we, made a, we named it IP3 sponge. Affinity is much higher than the original one. We just, when we introduce it, IP3 is trapped. Therefore, even though the spur, spin, stimuli comes, nothing happens. And actually, we used this technique to apply to a starfish egg. In normal cases, when sperm is added, this is the uh, fertilization envelope to block the second or third sperm come in, usually one sperm. But when we introduce the IP3 sponge to block the calcium oscillation, fertilization envelope is not formed. Therefore, fertilization is just blocked. Then, we applied further to understand the mechanism of uh, differentiation. Anterior, posterior, and dorsal ventral and right left is very important for making a body plan. And then, we found that and actually, those of ventral axis formation is determined at four cell or eight cell stage after fertilization. So we injected the function blocking antibody into ventral part. Then ventral part cell, just cell fate is switched to the dorsal part. Then another spinal cord came out. So just uh, manipulating the frequency cell fate was just switched. It is really exciting. And, uh, and also, we also found some of the right and left determination is also done by IP3-related uh, molecule. Uh, ZIC is also involved in right and left, and downstream and upstream is uh, uh, IP3 receptor signaling is located. Then we further uh, analyze the downstream target, and downstream target is a NFAT, nuclear factor with activated T cells. So this is the word obtained from immune system, but at early stages, nuclear factor of activated T cell is used for early stages for determination of the those of ventral axis formation. And we further found that uh, a ventral side and those are signal side signals are just a correlating, cross-talking each other. We also found. We, to understand further to, uh, the mechanism of the calcium signaling and IP3 signaling, we developed uh, IP3 indicator. The name comes from the flower, iris, and also uh, Iris is the name of the goddess of the rainbow, Greek mythology. And uh, we use the uh, technique of uh, fluorescence resonance energy transfer. And finally, we developed this techni technique based on the structure, crystal structure we obtain from the IP3 binding core. But uh, this uh, 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 sensitivity is not so high so further developed, and finally, we published this year in a scientific reports that both calcium signaling and IP3 signaling just uh, modulating. It is really exciting that here, this is the concentration of IP3. Then frequency of calcium oscillation. 
So frequency of oscillation depends upon the content of concentration of IP3. So we would like to apply this uh, technology to the development when cell fate is determined or cell, div cell division is performed. Then we, we are re interested in how IP3 receptor is evolved in neurite extension. We applied chromophore-assisted laser uh, inactivation technique. We, uh, in this case, we used the non-function blocking antibody into the cell. Then we add the malachite green to label it. Then uh, we label it and then injected the uh, cell, then add the laser beam. Then radicals come out and destroy the target molecule. Then here, laser beam is added to here growth cone, then ended. Gradually, retraction occurred. So this is the first demonstration that IP3 receptor located on the endoplasmic reticulum is one of the command tower for the neurite extension and retraction. There is also an IP3 receptor here in the stalk. Nothing happens, even though we add the laser beam here. So growth cone is a very important uh, command tower for the neurite extension uh, and retraction. Then we've, we found the P400 protein IP receptor from the uh, analysis of the cerebellum here. Cerebellum is a very important uh, structure and also the place for a learning a memory system. And Purkinje cell is located here and it uh, receives the signals from the granule cells and climbing fibers. From the granule cells as a power fiber and climbing fibers from other uh, neur neurons. Then we just uh, analyzed. And finally, this, this uh, concomitant stimuli of power fiber and climbing fiber results in a long-term depression, long-term depression this is the LTD in the normal case. But in knockout mouse, LTD cannot be produced. And since uh, uh, sometimes uh, transgenic uh, mice has some abnormali uh, abnormality in, uh, during development, so we in introduced the uh, function blocking antibody to the cell, we could repeat the same data. So we can conclude that from this data, that IP3 receptor is highly involved in learning a memory system. How about the synapse? We just made a knockout of a conditioned knockout mouse of IP3 receptor only in the Purkinje cell. We are really surprised to see it. Purkinje cells, spines, number and spine height is increased. But in this mice, LTD is just absent. This is the footprinting, real footprinting. We just uh, used the mice and the uh, ink, then walked. This is a random uh, attack. It shows a clear a severe cerebral ataxia. Then IP3 receptor may be involved in spine formation. How IP3 receptor regulates the number of spines. We just finally get the answer. IP3 receptor regulates spine morphology through CAM kinase to beta. Yeah, it was really exciting that uh, down, it activates PKC, phosphorylates PKC, and this PKC just regulates CAM kinase to beta. That regulates the axon elongation and suppression. And finally, we found that serine 315 phosphorylation is responsible for the spine increase and elongation and regression of excess spine development. So IP3 receptor is highly involved in spinal genesis. As uh, I just as expected from the beginning when we analyzed the uh, very uh, primitive uh, a mutant mouse, staggerer or Birkin cell deficient mice. Then how about a hippocampus? It is also abnormal. 
And usually, when we add a, uh, a stimuli, one spine, when we add the uh, 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 signals here, this spine is active, but next spine should be inactive. But in this knockout mouse, all the spine became active, activated. So spine specificity is absent in IP receptor knockout mouse. Then we also found that IP receptor and GABA-A receptor linked each other. It shows, knockout mouse shows severe ataxia and epileptic seizure. And we happened to found that diazepam just blocked the epileptic seizure. It is actually the agonist of a GABA receptor. Then we, we came to the conclusion that GABAergic synaptic transmission regulates excitation and inhibition balance through glutamate receptor, glutamate in neural circuits. I just would like to show you. Here, we introduced the technique of quantum dot single molecule imaging. It, in the synaptic area, spines, uh, molecules are really uh, flexibly uh, moving, especially in case of uh, uh, GABA-A receptor. Here, spines are localized. Uh, uh, at the synaptic area, receptors are lo localized. But extra synaptic area, it is moving, randomly moving. So even the synaptic area is really uh, flexible region, and sometimes it uh, receptors come join join in. Then, after some while, then go out. And in a stable synapses, this uh, synaptic area is really stable. But in IP receptor knockout mouse, this is really unstable. And finally, we found came to the conclusion that here. IP3 receptor signaling regulates, activates the PKC to regulate the clustering of the GABA-A receptor that functions for suppression. But in case of a calcium influx from the plasma membrane through, for example, NMDA receptor, it activates a calcineurin that results in a declustering of the GABA-A receptor that results a positive and negative. So uh, we can clearly say that continuous environment, calcium release from internal store results in a stabilization, so inhibition. But massive calcium influx through, a, for example, glutamate receptor results in a, a dispersion of the uh, inhibition. So, According to the influx of calcium release, calcium itself works as a negative or positive factor. Even the glutamate receptor, glutamate is considered to be the excitation molecule, but if the glutamate works through metabotropic glutamate receptor, it works for inhibitory function. And if it works on NMDA receptor, it works excitation. So glutamate works in one, according to the pathway, it shows uh, by uh, diverse uh, uh, two different uh, function. Then I just mentioned that uh, IP receptor works for exocrine secretion. As I mentioned to you that uh, exocrine secretion is a uh, uh, function maybe just uh, explained all by the uh, snare hypothesis. Nobody believed that the IP receptor may be involved in it, but fortunately, we could publish a paper to demonstrate that saliva secretion, pancreatic juice secretion, and lacrimal secretion and sweat secretion all are in involved. Uh, IP receptor type two and three are involved to it. Here, this is the uh, EM structure of type uh, two and three double knockout, you can see a very nice e endoplasmic reticulum here, but in case of knockout mouse, these are the uh, secretion granule. They cannot be secreted. All are accumulated inside the cell, and re release is just 
clearly measured like this. And this is the case of pancreas uh, excrement secretion. In normal case, there is a, a vesicle here. And our other part are just vacant, only the cytoplasmic area. But knockout, double knockout shows, uh, or type 2, type 3 knockout has uh, accumulation of uh, vesicles. And then, here, double knockout, full of vesicles inside the cell. In normal case, vesicles are only here. And uh, we just measure the amylase content. It is both are completely the same. So only the problem of secretion, we finally concluded. And we found a human mutation. This is a, uh, found in Paxton family. And uh, this is a collaboration work with a Swedish uh, research group. And uh, we found that this is called sweat secretion, in some cases called anhydrosis. And sometimes it causes hyperthermia and unconsciousness and coma and, in some severe cases, death. We finally found that uh, there is a, a mutation in the channel pore. And when we made a mutation here, oscillation is completely blocked. So this is the human uh, Pakistan family. And then we uh, added uh, iodine. Then we can clearly identify the secretion of amylase because uh, there is a change here in normal cases. And uh, I just would like to show you the stress-induced apoptosis and cell death, but uh, because of the time, I just would like to show you the papers which we published, but I just skip it. Then, I finally, I just would like to show you a new signaling pathway derived from the IP3 receptor. I just mentioned that when stimuli comes as a first messenger, receptors are activated, then IP3 is produced. Then IP3 binds to IP3 receptor and releases calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum to the cytoplasmic area. But we discovered another molecule. It is called Erbit. We named it IP3 binding protein released with inositol 1,4,5-trisphosphate. This is an endogenous IP3-like molecule. So this new pathway may be called a third messenger. Usually, we, we, we actually try to get as much as possible the molecule that associate with IP3 receptor in a native form. We usually elute by a graded uh, salt uh, solution. Finally, we added high amount of IP3, really unexpected way. Then we got a band. So this kind of unexpected procedure is very important for the discovery. Then we found that this is the ERVIT, IP3 binding protein released with IP3. This is a new molecule. And uh, this is actually the pseudo ligand of IP3. This is uh, actually the molecular mimicry. So it inhibits calcium release. So it, it competes with IP3. But if Ervit is first f discovered, IP3 may be the pseudo ligand of Ervit. So we do not know which is which. So anyhow, we discovered a new uh, ligand, uh, pseudo ligand of IP3. And uh, when we eliminate the phosphates, Ervit cannot bind to the IP3 receptor. So phosphate is so important. This is the hypothetical structure, but there is a disordered structure here, and uh, this uh, phosphate region is so important to uh, binding the target. And also, we found in, in my laboratory, and also these are the collaboration work uh, in uh, America and uh, Korea, 
And we found that sodium bicarbonate coat transporter one is activated by orbit. And also, you can see the sodium proton exchanger is also activated by orbit. So orbit may regulate electron, uh, electrolyte transport. That means orbit may be uh, responsible for changing the pH inside the cell. And another discovery is that orbit binds to the regulatory region of calm kinase to alpha and inhibits its activity. All of you may know that the calm kinase 2 is important for learning memory by activating, regulating the uh, ampere receptor or other molecules. We found that orbit just competes with cal modeling, just all the same similar site just to compete the activity of calm kinase to alpha. And orbit local, co localizes with calm kinase to be alpha. It is really exciting. And then, this is just a hypothesis, but orbit released from IP3 receptor may regulate synaptic plasticity through ampere receptor and NMD receptor. Because ampere receptor, it is really probable. And uh, Orbit is highly expressed in astrocytes, so it may regulate the pH. And the NMD, NMD receptor is sensitive to the pH regulation. So in both ways, pH regulation and direct uh, phosphorylation or regulation, and the upper, uh, millennium memory system may probably be regulated. This is still a hypothesis we have to further analyze. Then how about? IP receptor knockout. It showed hyperactivity. And uh, it, social interaction was abnormal. So it is autism like phenotype. And catecholamine content is enhanced. Dopamine was enhanced. So it can be the animal model for autism. And uh, this is unpublished data, but uh, uh, learning a memory system is also abnormal. So we are really surprised that uh, Urbit, which is uh, localized here, is uh, uh, working in uh, various ways. And further, I, just, uh, I recently we also found the uh, function of Urbit uh, in apoptosis, especially ER mitochondria contact is uh, very important recently. And this is the figure which is uh, in press in annual review of physiology that uh, especially IP receptor is expressed in any parts. But especially, I would like to stress the importance of uh, mitochondria ER junction. It is called MAM. But we have already observed this uh, structure in 1991. Here, this is the endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria. This is the junction of MAM. And the mitochondria is just surrounded by stacks of endoplasmic reticulum. So these are the MAM site. And MAM site is now considered to be very important and actually ER, uh, orbit is just localized in uh, mitochondria, uh, ER site, and then ER mitochondria contact is reduced in orbit knockout mouse, and knockout mouse reduces calcium transfer from ER to mitochondria. Then orbit controls finally the apoptosis by regulating calcium transfer from ER to mitochondria. When stress is added, apoptosis is caused. And we are really surprised that orbit knockout cell is resistant to cell death. So recently, orbit is also involved in uh, cancer or aging, though, and, uh, and also this kind of phosphorylation is highly involved in these processes. And uh, we 
just our paper is uh, published in Nature Communication that uh, ER mitochondrial junction has different IP receptor isoforms from site to site. That means the calcium function, IP receptor releasing function through IP receptor is different so that uh, there is a strong, uh, very big diversity in inside the cell. So inside the cell, subcellular organelle is not homogeneous and has a very unique uh, function in apoptosis, uh, cell death, and also uh, causing various kinds of diseases. And uh, now uh, these are the papers published in my laboratory relating to the IP3 receptor. But uh, it was uh, considered to be the calcium is working for producing variety of functions. But now we believe that IP3 receptor signaling is really involved to this. But still, it is really a busy slice. But now we are finding that these uh, phenomena, Alzheimer's disease, Huntington disease, immunological uh, diseases, or sugar syndrome, or taste uh, olfaction abnormality, we are now finding some of the uh, associating molecules to the IP3 receptor. Now we have a tool to visualize near atomic resolution level. So based on the information, probably we will be able to classify again in a more simple way how the disease is caused by the abnormality of the IP3 receptor itself or association with the IP3 receptor. So even uh, neurodegenerative uh, diseases, we are now having some very important uh, mechanism, and uh, we, I'm sorry that I cannot tell for the moment, but we will probably be able to solve based on the IP receptor calcium signaling function. So thank you very much uh, for your uh, kind attention, and uh, I... Uh, thank you very much. Um, we are on that is uh, from the history of the discovery of the channel, structure and functional relationship, and cell function, and uh, phenotype uh, and related to the diseases. So now uh, I'd like to take some questions from the audience. Yes. I'm interested in the Thank you for the nice lecture. I'm interested especially to the competition between uh, calcium and orbit or IP3 receptor, which uh, molecule has higher binding capacity to IP3 receptor. Because I thought maybe uh, calcium entry may release orbit from IP3 receptor or vice versa. Orbit expression may release calcium from, from IP3 receptors. I wonder. I think uh, there are so many factors so that uh, I cannot tell the exact uh, answer now. Because uh, orbit, when we just, uh, I showed that orbit is just bind to the IP3 binding pocket. But uh, many of the orbit is uh, just floating. It's floating. So I think there may be some uh, uh, concentration problem. We have to consider about that. So situation is not so simple. I just uh, tried to uh, show you very, in a simple way. But uh, more si real situation is more complex. I see. So but it is a really exciting area. I see. You so probably you don't know the binding capacity of IP3 receptor and calcium to calmodulin, CAMK2 alpha. Which one has higher binding capacity to? Yeah, we have to f further analyze it more in detail. Thanks. Yeah, th that's a very important uh, point. Question: What happens in the calcium oscillation? I think we have not analyzed in detail. I think, yeah, maybe, yeah that's a very important question and, uh, and very delicate point. Probably, yeah, we will, uh, that's a very important question. Thank you very and much. In which tissue, or in which tissue orbit is expressed? Even in egg orbit is expressed and orbit can have some yeah. important role on the calcium oscillation in egg? Uh, in egg, we have not analyzed 
in detail, but uh, it is expressed highly in the nervous system. Nervous system. Astrocytes, highly expressed, and neurons, highly expressed. So mainly it is working in the nervous system. But uh, still, we do not uh, neglect the possibility in other tissues. It, but we are now realizing that even low concentration of a molecule, if, if, when we consider at the local side, concentration may be very high. That is enough for triggering variety of unexpected data. <clears throat> so uh, as far as the calcium is concerned, even the small, I just mentioned that uh, here, if only this part is changed, this can change the whole function of the cell. And we are now analyzing, we can just analyze this part by developing the indicator here. And also, we, we are now developing the indicator here or here. What happens? Nobody analyzed that. Even a neurodegenerative disease is caused by that. Everybody just uh, analyzed, just uh, uh, homogenization, analyzed what molecule is enhanced or decreased. That's uh, nonsense. Because now you mentioned about uh, neurodegenerative diseases. I have another question. Uh, is there any uh, region specificity or subcellular localization specificity or IP3 receptor in neurons? Like maybe uh, only on ER surface, really close to spine, ER receptor may be expressed and regulate spinogenesis. But localization may be disturbed in Alzheimer's disease mm -hmm. or other diseases. And that's maybe the reason the spine was lost in those diseases. And that's a very, very important question, yes. Because many people did not realize the importance. And now, we, we thought that why IP receptors are localized here during development? Nobody just neglected our proposal. But now, we restart again to analyze it more in detail. I see. That is a very good uh, subject for the... Uh, so IP3 uh, yeah. receptor subcellular localization is not all entire surface of ER, just some region of sure, ER sure, surface. Sure, 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 sure. Especially recently, this localization is very important. I see. We have already found that important here. Because uh, from, type to, uh, from some type, IP receptor 1 is highly expressed here, in other localization part, type 2 is expressed. That means calcium flux uh, release mechanism is different. And orbit association may be different. Other molecular uh, association may be different. So only one part changes the cell fate. Is it known how IP3 receptor uh, subcellular localization is controlled? Uh, that's a very important, another Maybe important question. Maybe protein for IP3 receptors or? We have uh, intensively analyzed. There are so many molecules uh, to regulate the localization. Yes. And uh, movement is uh, uh, also uh, different from type to type. Because there is some, some small sequence that is associating with this molecule that with this molecule, IP receptor is carried. And another uh, isoform that has no sequence for the carrying, so it cannot move. Yeah, the, the very important question. And also, function of, uh, b because of type two and type three, a promoter uh, sequence is so different. Especially exocrine, uh, secretion related uh, uh, box is included at the five promoter region. Type one is a neural specific uh, box is, uh, e, for example, E-box or others. Are in so type two was a P400? No, no, uh, type one was a P400. Oh. But uh, we just uh, uh, cloned type two and three, and they are involved in uh, secretion. Secretion is a general phenomenon of our body, not only neural secretion, not only uh, hormonal secretion, uh, exocrine secretion. So. It is each ice form are working, collaborating each other to do important function. Probably association of each ice form is also important. But we still do not know that some part is locally working only by type one clusters or type two clusters. We still do not know. Thank you very much. Thank you.
very, uh, thank you very much uh, for a nice talk. And I have a question about uh, about uh, sodium pot uh, chloride uh, ATPs or uh, sodium uh, po potassium <laughs> ATPs, the, and uh, trip channel could be related to the uh, IP3 receptors. Uh, is that uh, uh, related to the orbit or? We still do not know. No, we do, we do not know. But uh, it should be. <laughs> but the uh, binding site is the binding site of IP receptor to sodium potassium ATPase is different from the binding core. So orbit may be there, but the binding site to the sodium potassium ATPase is another part. But uh, they may work. To, re for example, regulating the pH because the uh, orbit can bind and activate uh, sodium bicarbonate co-transporter or sodium proton exchanger, so that if uh, orbit is binding bound to the sodium potassium ATPase and then activates pH regulator, it may regulate in, in anyhow. Another point would be uh, synapse formation. Uh, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, NMD receptor induced calcium influx can release, uh, reduce the AMPA receptor. So, mm -hmm. the, uh, but uh, in, a, in the, the other case. GABA receptor. Ah, uh, GABA, uh, GABA, yes. The clustering, yes. Yes, GABA <clears throat> receptor. And uh, in another case, uh, uh, metabolic glutamine. Uh, glutamate receptor can induce, yes. but uh, the calcium signal will be the same. But no, calcium signaling is completely different. Calcium release because uh, M metabotropic glutamate receptor activation results in the activation of IP receptor that activates PKC. Yeah. So pathway is different. Calcium yes. release just uh, clusters GABA receptor. But the NMD receptor pathway from influx that, that just uh, activates uh, calcineurin, they cluster the GABA receptor. Yes. Uh, my point is uh, finally, uh, calcium signal will, will be the same, but uh, uh, how differentiate uh, in uh, this signal or uh, uh, differentiated in the cells. Yes, that is the most important point. So many people believe that if the calcium exists inside the cell, the function of the calcium may be the same. It's wrong. Where it comes, that is the point. If the calcium comes from outside through the plasma membrane, the function is, in that case, positive. For example, glutamate. Glutamate can work as a positive excitatory function. But glutamate, when glutamate works through metabotropic glutamate receptor, through IP3 receptor, it works inhibitory. So the, uh, I just wonder the orbit can be the uh, key signaling for the uh, regulating the, uh, this kind of yeah. signal. Very important question. We have not uh, considered about it, but uh, I think uh, we should uh, yeah, consider about that. Because always IP receptor is there, orbit is there. And orbit is uh, just uh, floating at the cytoplasmic area. So, and also there is uh, another type of uh, isoform. So these isoforms are also working in a different way. So we have to further analyze. There are so many things to, we have to work on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any more question? It's okay. So, uh, uh, last question. Yes. Thank you for the nice lecture. And I'm the second year undergraduate student of Keio University, and I'm interested in the difference in uh, difference of s subtype, and maybe I just missed, but is. Uh, how how is the difference in the role of each IP3 receptor is caused? Is is it caused by the 
difference in structure, like suppressive binding site, or, or is it caused by another reason? As I mentioned, that uh, in the various ways, it is uh, here. We thought, uh, I think it is very similar. But uh, you mentioned that uh, IP3 binding affinity is different. This is one of the, one of the several differences. But the uh, important thing is how IP3 receptor associates with other molecules. Because glycosylation site is different, phosphorylation sites are different, and also splicing sites are different. It is easily understood that association molecule may be so different. If the mo association molecule is different, function of the each isoform may be so different. And also, we just uh, sequenced all maybe about more than uh, 700 uh, uh, sequence, then all are different. So expression part in a cell, cell type, and also inside the cell, subcellular localization may be so different. So all of those, those factors makes the difference, like whether the, the IP3 receptor works on new, new extension or excrine, excrine, excrine. Could, could you repeat uh, uh, the sorry. last, last Excrine secretion. Uh, excrine secretion. <laughs> so those differences are caused yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so, yes. I see. Because uh, uh, type 1, usually do not work for exocrine secretion. Yeah. But, but yeah. my colleague just found that yeah. even neural system secretion is done by type 1 IP receptor in neurons. Oh, in Purkinje cell, some secretion, BDF, some of the important factors is mm -hmm. done by IP receptor type 1. Mm -hmm. So. Basically, all the IP receptor has some function for secretion, but type two and three are mainly involved in exocrine secretion. Mm -hmm. we, I, can, I think I can say that. Mm -hmm. But even type one is also involved the basic cell mechanism for excretion, Secre or increased excretion or endocrine secretion, both may be involved. I see, thank, thank, thank you. Very you. Much. Thank you very okay, much. Thank you very much. I'd like to close the lecture now. And thank you again, Professor Mikoshiba. Thank you very much. <laughs>